All right. All right, everybody. Welcome to Super Metroid 30 Years of Speed Reverse Boss Order starring Papa Schmo. We have commentary from Kevnastics and Exact Science. I'm going to give Pops a countdown and then we'll talk about the run. It's a really awesome run. Um, Pops, you ready to go? Yeah, five, let's do it. In five, four, three, two, one, go. English text. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yes. Ah. There we go. Series station. Hopefully, we only need to see this once. Um. So yeah, uh, I like Kev said. I am Exact Science. Um, well, I'm very excited to be a part of this uh, 30 years of speed here. Um, this is like Kev said. Also, this is reverse boss order. So, um, as you uh, as you've seen, this game can be beaten with the bosses beaten in a lot of different orders. The standard order is what you saw on well two of the 100% runners earlier screens earlier. If you were here. Um, you beat Kraid, get the various suit, beat Fantoon, get the gravity suit, go to Meridia where there's water and beat Dragon, then go to Lower Norfair where there's lava and heat and beat Ridley. Uh, in this category, true to its name, you do that in the opposite order. So big things are that uh, you don't get either suit because it's kind of slow. Yeah, I'd also like to add that this is my absolute favorite category. Um, Shmo has been practicing really hard in this category. Um, in order to beat the bosses in reverse order, there's a lot of crazy things you need to do. So there's going to be some minor glitches. We're going to do like a gate glitch. Um, we're going to collect a lot of E-tanks, uh, missiles, super missiles, power bombs so that we can do some crystal flashes in lower Norfair. There's a really, really cool Ridley fight. Um, the dragon fight is very unique. And since we're not getting any suits, we're going to be in Meridia suitless. You can tell my dogs are super excited about this, so uh, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, I have to say, um, Kev, I know that you and I are both like very, very vocal supporters of uh, of the Suitless Meridia. I know myself especially. And I, you will, anyone who spends any time at all in the the Discord, whether the main SM Discord or any of the rando Discords. Um, I am constantly talking about how great, actually, Suitless Meridia is anytime someone says that it's bad. <laughs> so naturally, oh, I love this category. <laughs> I love it. I think, uh, what was it, in one of the rando tournaments, they started calling the Suitless Meridia Kevnastic Seeds because I was able to calm <laughs> so many Suitless Meridia Seeds. But yeah, I actually, I love it so much. I do it twice. I know Pops is going to do it twice. Um, so Pops is going to get 30 missiles, 30 super missiles, which uh, we'll explain that later when we get to the um, <laughs> when we get to the uh, lower Norfair, why we need so many super missiles and why 30 is such an important number. Um, also 25 power bombs and about nine E tanks so that we can lava dive into lower Norfair. Um, and yeah, we're going to go to Meridia twice and some pretty cool stuff going to happen. Um, yeah. And so this run um unlike a lot of other runs you know for most categories everything is pretty much the same until you, at least until you get bombs um rbo is one of the categories where often it's a little bit different um so anyone who's watched um any of the like really high level runs you know there's uh, the taco tank trick where you can get the ceiling energy tank here in retro brinstar early um Pops is not going to go for that because it is it is very difficult, but we are going to see um, coming up a, an early collection of that energy tank. Um, just going to be the the slow way, but it's still a lot faster than dying in Upper Norfair. So, um, I think also if you're uh, not very experienced with the Hell Runs, it really pays to have this extra E-Tank and you end up doing less, uh, needing to do less farming when you get to Bubble Mountain and uh, the Bat Cave in speed hallway so i think that um this can mitigate some time as well going back for this so just the uh kind of age-old thing is you just get as much as you need to go fast yep contrary to popular belief uh i mean this is a challenging category for sure with enough safeties it's not nearly as hard as a lot of people think um it's just not fast so as we can see here rather than going up the climb uh like you normally would at this point in the game 
Pops is opening the, the door, killing all the pirates, opening the door, and then going back down the elevator. So what killing the pirates does is it wakes up uh, the planet. And so now there will be enemies down here. And we're going to use one of those um, to damage boost to that energy tank in this next room here. I really like that we're showcasing this kind of a run for RBO instead of, um, you know, the top runs. Um, just to show that, you know, there is an accessibility to it to somebody that has some experience speed running and we get to see some safeties and maybe a not uncommon, you know, not very common route because people are used to seeing, you know, the top level RBO runs like single Norfair and taco tank. So I really like that we're going to see what kind of route possibilities there are for anybody that might be interested in getting into this category and seeing a little bit about, you know, historically people, everybody got more stuff going down into lower Norfare, you know, before, uh, I would say before 2020, when things got kind of heat, heated up, right? Yeah. Um, and then I think something that's, that's also really interesting about, um, about RBO and kind of why it's my favorite, my favorite category conceptually as well is that there are just so many ways to route it, even if you're t doing the same like general routing of the game, even picking up the same number of items. Um, like when I, I run it, I pick up 25 or 30 missiles, 30 supers and 25 power bombs, but I take an entirely different path through the game to get those than Pops is gonna take, despite also doing double Meridia, double Norfair. So um, it's like a really cool category that really showcases just how much freedom you have in this game to play it however you want, which, you know, I think is one of the really beautiful things about Super Metroid and why it's been such an enduring classic for 30 years. Speaking of why it's been such an enduring classic, look at all this beautiful movement on display. Pops is showing us gap skips, showing us ledge grabs, um, really nice missile shots into the door. So uh, some really good uh, explosives, use of explosives. And we pick up our bombs. We're gonna have our BT fight right there. And Pops is looking really good. Yep. And uh, one of the, the nice things about uh, about doing that, um, getting that E-Tank is that it lets you pick up another pack of missiles, which streamlines this fight a bit. You can all basically always one round BT without having to do anything with like conserving the drops properly, which is always nice. That's also factoring the time save that you can get from picking up that early E-Tank, um, you know, not just in refilling your health, but on that BT fight. So we have an Alcatraz escape right here, failed by Pops, but he's going to go again and easy as can be, first time, every time. There we and, go. Um, yeah, this is, um, well, what we'll see is we'll go into early supers. Pops is going to pick up a reserve tank. Reserve tanks are uh, really important in this round, uh, especially when it comes to Ridley. So that'll be the difference that we'll see from an any percent run when we go into the early supers room and it'll look a little bit more like Hundo. And then um, Pops will pretty much make his way down to Upper Norfair and uh, do some hell runs there before coming back up this way. And I think Pops does a clockwise cleanup, I think he said. I prefer counterclockwise. It's all about, like, you know, you were saying earlier, whatever's most comfortable for you as far as a run is concerned. Yep, because in this category particularly, you know, there are, there are a lot of ways uh, to die, a lot of ways to lose a run in reverse boss order. So whatever, whatever keeps you alive the most, the, like... That is is a strat to do. I think the worst way to lose a reverse boss order run is going to crate first. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Um, it is kind of kind of important that you beat the bosses in in the specific prescribed order. Oh, and as Sassy says, <laughs> absolute dumb ways to die. RBO sure. is all about finding new ways to die. There are so many of them. All right. Yes, so, yeah, that was a uh, punk reference. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna see Pops grabbing that Brinstar reserve tank. Uh, like Kev said, that's a very useful item to have, both because it's the fourth tank, and because like the, the way that the reserves work, it can be like extra helpful. Like if you're when you're going down the lower Norfair elevator or at the end of the Ridley fight, to like kind of squeeze a little bit more time out of the amount of energy that you have. Um. But for the most part, this is going to be fairly standard up until, aside from that reserve tank, this is going to be pretty similar to what you'd see in any percent um, up until we get down to, to Norfair the first time. Um, 
or at the bottom of Red Tower, and you'll see some divergence there. Grabbing the charge missiles. Yeah, it's best in this category when you're picking up missiles just to grab some that are along the way. It's not worth going through a door transition or, you know, anywhere like over by Mission Impossible, that missile there. It's not really worth going out of your way for that. But if it's in the way, you might as well grab it. And um, we actually don't have to worry about a GT fight. If we did, um, the number of missiles is a little bit more specific because you want to avoid a GT attack. But we're not going to do GT, so skip that. <laughs> Um, all right, so we got the green hill zone here. No bug boost, but that's all right. Oh, nice super drop from that hopper. Those guys do not drop supers often. Yeah, I actually um, love the farming aspect of RBO, just kind of running through the room, far rooms, farming drops as you go. Uh, you, you know, getting to the point now where Pops is going to want to get some energy to fill some of the reserve there, but most likely we'll just get that E-Tank down at high jump boots after picking up Spazer, and then um, farm the Sovas for uh, filling up the reserve for the Hell Runs. Now, Kev, tell me, are you a Spazer enjoyer? Um, for this category specifically, um, yes, I love Spazer, especially now that I started running like that route that includes GT. Um, Spazer just really makes that fight so much easier. So for RBO, I love Spacer. I think it's a really, really great beam. But like outside of that, I, I really don't have any feelings about Spacer one way or another. Yeah, I, I guess I'm also a, a pretty vocal Spacer defender as well. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's very good in this category, especially for those those upper Norfair Hell runs. You know, it lets you it lets you do farms much quicker because it's double the damage of P shot and a much larger. Uh, much larger hitbox um so like for example um these sovas here here coming up at the bottom of the elevator as you can see we went down instead of going over to crate because no point in going to crate we can't get the energy tank there we're not getting varia um but these sovas here um die in one hit rather than two or a charge shot um which makes life a lot easier um yeah, and if you're not wasting missiles, then you don't need to worry about those as much for drops. Yep, and another super. Wow, let's... It's actually let's good poke. because he's more likely to get energy drops from the Sovas when he uh, comes out of high jump boots. So not not bad having full supers here. Pretty good. Um, I don't know if he picks up the missile packs here in the can can room. Though. Looks like he does. Yeah, I... Uh... Oh. No? Or... Set up for the jump. All right, so I guess we're just going. Um, so yeah, we do want we do want some more energy. We'll see if uh, we're taking a safety save here before. Yes, so we're gonna take our first save of the run. Um, we're coming up on the first uh, hell run of the run, uh, going through Cathedral. Um, the movement is pretty similar to what you'd see in any other any other like any percent category. Uh, like we're not gonna get the cathedral missiles but this one's really about clean movement but it, it's not trivial it's like the easier one of the easier hell runs in the run i would say but it's not a trivial one by any means you can die here with a simple misstep it's also kind of funny too that you know you wouldn't even think twice going through some of these rooms in any percent because um they're just not dangerous at all um, these enemies hit really hard when you don't wear a suit, so you need to avoid them. And uh, Pop's getting a hit there. He should be okay. You know, no problem right there. I try to farm up to about 60 before I go to the Batcave to feel kind of safe. Pops does have stuff in his uh, reserve. Probably get a super from this cack up here. Yep, and it uh, looks like missiles from the waiver. But we do have a full reserve tank, so we've got we've got plenty of energy to make it up to the bugs here. Um, so this is a, another hell run. The, the hardest part of this one is getting up to the bugs in the first place. Um, the real real consideration here is that it's pretty slow to farm them, so you'd like to farm them as possible. But it's not once you get up here, it's not you're not really in danger anymore. You can just sit here and shoot Spazer at them. Yeah, pretty much the thing is, is when you go into the Batcave with like 60 energy, you can do it provided you get good drops from the gamuts. 
because uh, sometimes they'll all drop small health and then you just don't have time to wait for the next round of bugs to come. So, you know, very precarious, but Pop's looking really, really good. Going to get Speed Booster, and then after Speed Booster, make way to Wave Beam. Um, there was uh, something said in chat about the progression of uh, different RBO routes. I mean, I think that would be absolutely fascinating um, to see how RBO has developed over the years and how people have pushed the category. I mean, that would be that would be really outstanding. Um, sometimes people get 30 supers because that makes the Ridley fight more or less trivial if you have the proper amount of E tanks and you're pretty experienced there. Um, some runners will do 25 in a combination of missiles. Uh, some runners will do 20 in a combination of X factors. Uh, so, you know, that's really where you're, you're looking to do. What kind of Ridley fight are you going to do? Um, and that's what all this is preparing for. Yep. And we did see um, Pops having the same thing happen as happened earlier with his, uh, his blue suit leaving speed. Um, if you, like, take... I think it's taking damage at the lo the wrong time. Something to do with the sound cue. Um, it can mess up your. Oh, so we've, we've got to save before the wave hell run. I can see that. Uh, so this wave hell run is actually, in my opinion, the hardest of the upper Norfair um, first pass run heated runs to do. Um, it's just like, like you can make as we saw, like you can make a few mistakes in the cathedral hell run and still be fine. Here. Like, there's not much room for error. Um, it's like, at the very least, you'll have to burn your reserve, which you'd really rather not do at this point. But uh, these spikes um, in double chamber here, right before wave beam, uh, these do 60 damage without a suit. And, like, with the amount of time that you're spending in these heated rooms, you're taking 15 damage a second from heat. Um, and so that extra 60 means that you have to do the rooms in four seconds. You have four fewer seconds to do the rooms, which often, you know, just means that you don't have enough time and you have to reset to that save. So, yeah, unfortunately, Pops has that other E tank, but he's moving through beautifully. Uh, you can take a hit and be okay with three tanks, two and one. You really can't afford to take a hit, or you, you know, you got to hope you have a full reserve and you're already near the end of the hell run itself yeah see there like that with that extra tank he was he was fine but that would be that would be cutting it real close with a spike hit on one fewer tank um and so now this this little mini run is fine we can farm a couple bugs here uh and then coming up is the uh this gate which is we don't have to gate glitch um, because it's blue, so we can just shoot it with wave. And I hope he gets go. this Kago. This is my favorite Kago in the game. This is a good one. Oh, there we go. Nice. Let's Got it. Go. And just going to run here into the refill room. Very conveniently placed. Makes you wonder exactly how how much um, Deer Force had in mind that people would be foolish and try to do Upper Norfair without any heat protection. Um, all right, and there we go. We are in to our Crocomire fight. For Crocomire, one missile pushes Croc back one step. Super missiles uh, push back Croc three steps. Charge beam two steps, and it doesn't matter what you have uh, unless it's plasma, and then that'll one shot Croc most of the time. Yep. Um, good old. They they did not expect you to have plasma before fighting croc apparently <laughs> they're like let's leave this game completely open but nobody's ever gonna do this <laughs> all right and so um getting this e-tank here we're gonna see i imagine a similar um a similar little uh, oh no we're not doing the wraparound shot here um you can just jump and shoot the door before you spark. Then you don't have to worry about going into the acid. But ooh, nice spike oh, suit. Oh, all right. We're getting a spike suit. Pops also has Moonwalk. He could have set up for the wraparound shot um, up on top of the pedestal there. But um, we'll see what Pops chooses to do. Uh, yeah, that was a very... Like, that That trick is absolutely not trivial. A lot of, a lot of very good runners make it look easy. But that spike suit is... A, a morph, nice. an unmorph, uh, <laughs> good spark. 
It's an unmorph with a two frame window, either the same frame or a frame after you take damage from the spikes. Uh, and then a frame perfect spark, um, uh, like on the last frame of the knockback from those spikes. So not at all a trivial trick. I have a 119 in this category and I've never gotten a spike suit. Not even once. All right. And so now we're going down to to get our grapple beam. That's uh, spe with the double Meridia, um, particularly the version that Pops does. We will have to do some grappling. Oh, sick. I love that mock ball. It's so cool. <laughs> this is one of my favorite rooms in RBO and Hundo. I just, I don't know. I love it. I kind of miss not getting a chance to do Indiana Jones. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but you also get to go for the best mock ball in the game. Oh, setup looks good. There we Sweet. go. Got it. <laughs> nice. So cute. All right. And so now we're just going to head back up. We've got our power bombs now. Um, and that almost wraps up the Upper Norfair item collection. Um, because uh, we... Pops will get Ice Beam, and that'll be the last Hell Run for a while. Yep. Um, if we were doing um, single Meridia, that both Ice Beam and Grapple could wait until um, after the the cleanup that we're going to go do. Because right now, you know, we ha don't really have enough energy to go into Lower Norfair and survive. Um, and so we need to go with this double Norfair, these double Norfair routes. They involve going back and through Criteria and Brinstar to some degree. So that is where we're going to head next. Super looks a little low, but we've got a few more. Yeah, we're good. You pops want this is another good thing about picking up that early E tank that pops did in uh, Blue Brin is you have an extra tank for this uh, ice hell run. If you're going to do double Meridia, it makes this just a little bit more cozy. And um, pops shouldn't have to worry, likely has a full reserve uh, from farming those gamuts coming out of coming out of crock PB. So, um, yeah, looking really good. Pops is moving really smooth. No trouble so far. Really kind of showing just top tier movement. Proud of you, Pops. Looking good, buddy. Yep. Yeah. And these, these upper Nor Norfair uh, hell runs, like they're, that's basically all you need to do to be successful with them as long as your movement's relatively clean. But like they're not generally too, all that dangerous. Um, yeah, but yeah, like you said. something that's like when you start to run with a timer. You know, it changes everything. Same thing, like, when you're moving through these rooms with Varia suit or gravity suit, you kind of take it for granted. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you miss a jump, okay, not a big deal. But, like, <laughs> some some miss jumps without any suits or, like, you hit an enemy. It's just really bad news. Nice ice escape there from Papa Shmo. Very and, good. Um, there we go. We're going to go on a very, like, Hundo-like uh, item cleanup, except uh, a little less like Hundo because I believe Pops does clockwise but is he gonna go get alpha beta pbs first so he actually does not climb red tower at all okay, okay. um that is so what blue brand and mission impossible yep we're gonna go up uh blue brand to criteria and then down back down through green and pink friend star um this is like like i said like pops and i pick up basically the same number of items and do both do two passes of uh, Norfair and Meridia, but uh, in my route, I go up Red Tower rather than through Retro Brin. We're going to get this uh, Sloter's refill here, fill up our energy, but I mean, those hoppers are, are no joke in Retro Brin Star. They hit you for 80 without a suit, so uh, probably for the best. Yeah, you might as well play it safe, especially in a marathon run. Um, it's such a volatile category. If you give yourself one less thing to worry about, then you can just kind of concentrate on the movement. And, uh, you know, that's that's exactly what we want to showcase here. What a versatile game this is and just how, how cool the movement is and how things have evolved over the years. Nice use of pseudo screw there, unfortunately, um, freezing that hopper. All right. Yep, there's the there's the power bomb that's going to open the... Uh, I like this what? Setting up for the short charge for funds. What are we? What are we doing here? Where are we, oh, we're. <laughs> that would have been that, funny. That was supposed to be to spark through there. I see. I see. That would have been. Oh, that would have nailed. 
<laughs> all of the hoppers, wouldn't it? That's that's a pretty cool little strat. Too bad we didn't get to see it. But kudos for trying. Yeah, so I think Pops is going to go up and get Klein Supers. Yep. And then, well, are we going to do uh, Moonfall again and then come back down here? Or are we going to go through Green Brin? Um, so, yeah, we're as far as I know, this route is going to go up. We're going to get Climb Supers, the landing site items. Uh, we're going to get Gauntlet E Tank. And then we're going to go down and do the second pass of Green Brin Star to get all the. We, like, we don't really need that many more. I think we've got one more missile pack to pick up. Um, but um, mostly what we're doing this cleanup for is for super missiles, power bombs, and energy tanks. I kind of like this. I usually come back here after I do landing site. I'll do alpha and beta PBs, then landing site, then I'll come down here um, and do climb supers and then go back up. So this is, uh, this is pretty neat. Again, showcasing the the variations in um in the game. This is really cool. All right, and then don't have to worry about these spikes because we've got grapple and enough energy um, to survive them just fine. I imagine we will see a ship refill here though um, before sparking up to the power bomb. It's nice to see so many RBO enjoyers in chat. <laughs> from the vanilla and random rando community alike um i i think uh rbo i feel like rbo has gotten way more popular in the last year and a half than it was in a, i don't like I, I just feel like there's more people running rbo this year and last year than there were the previous two years yeah i think that and hopefully that increases because you know like we're saying yeah. it's not it's like there are parts of it that are very difficult and even with a lot of safeties, you can't expect to die a lot running this category. But, you know, it's totally feasible to, to finish a run with enough safeties. It'll just, just may, might take you a while, but you can do it. We yeah, believe I, in you. I love my 30 super route. I, one day I hope I can run a 25 super route. That double X factor is still giving me a little bit of trouble. But um, again, just it really just makes it just a very, you know, a run that evolves as you get better really exciting and definitely gets the blood pumping and you'll see once we do our item cleanup and then head down and do our meridian cleanup like lower norfair is super exciting in this category no oh, i think this is uh pops is doing um I think an interesting just, setup the same, i think it's the same one behemoth uses because behemoth doesn't have angle down see i use that setup for plasma beam for phaser i just i don't know move a little more to the right aha uh -huh. feels bad man that's fine. We've got a, a short charge here we can do as backup. Yeah, Kai, I can do the 25 super with one there X factor, but it's not consistent at all. And nice Whee! gauntlet spark from Pops. Uh, there's something about that spark that's just very satisfying to me. <laughs> every time, every time, feel like a true gamer when you pull that off. All right. And even from that shelf there with that short charge, very good job, Pops. Good backup. And no, no procreation professional here. We're just gonna, excuse me. We're just gonna go through and clear this with power bombs. Totally acceptable choice. We're about to get a bunch of them. Was that a CWJ? Maybe. I turned away for a second. <laughs> nice. So on my pun, no, we don't have to worry about. We don't have to worry about which side we go down here. I All got right. That and missile pack for thirty. And that is the last missile pack that we will be picking up this this run. Zenny, uh, somebody actually told you you ruined the category. This, I think Zenny's RBO world record is like my absolute favorite Super Metroid run of all time. It's it's a pretty pretty sick one. Um, like I started speed running Super Metroid because I wanted to do RBO. I don't even care that I'm not good enough to get Taco Tank. I, I will never get that tank. I'll just have fun with my route and have a really good time surviving. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, like, whatever. Like, just play the game how you want. That's, like, the beautiful thing about this game. Like, there are so many ways to play. Like, the way somebody else plays, like, doesn't affect the way that you can play at all. 
I don't even use Moonwalk like at all ever for any reason, but I love Zenny's Moon Dance route is sick. All right, and so here we go. Uh, coming back to that Green Brinstar item collection, uh, we've got supers and an energy tank. This whole area underneath the main shaft is uh, definitely like a, a smorgasbord of the items that we we really want to have before we we head down to Lower Norfair. Oh, some some really nice damage boosts um, there. Visiting the, our friends the Etacoons. And oh, he's got to love it. It's the stupid game. <laughs> yeah, I it's like I maintain that wall jumping and the associated tech is the second hardest thing to do in this game behind spin jumping. So, well, we're, right. we're playing RBO, spin jumping in Lower Norfair is near impossible. That's alpha elite <laughs> level strat. Oh, yeah, we will, we will definitely touch on that some more down there. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped spin in like uh, either worst room in the game or wasteland. Yeah, we're hoping for none of those from from pops. But yeah, that the reason we get as many e tanks as we do is because lower Norfair can be absolutely brutal. Oh, pops uh, didn't lay that power bomb far enough left. Just a little bit far to the right, but we've got plenty. And got. A dead hopper. No mission impossible, but that's all right. And well, two more E tanks in this area to collect. And um, then we're going to also get spore spawn supers. Yep. And let's see what the, the setup here. All right. Nicely done. Um, that super is actually it, like you have to set up for it pretty specifically. Oh, neat boost! Yeah, that was really cool. I've never seen anybody boost off the top enemy, the Zila. Yeah, you kind of forget they're there. Um, uh, I used the little bugs, but uh, yeah, so there's a, a set of pixel positions you need to um. If you get the super to have just the right velocity, um, it won't despawn before it hits that super block like it's supposed to. Um, so you have to like carefully scroll the screen and be in a one of a, a set of pretty specific pixel positions. Um, really nice one shot and morph on that gate right there. That's way trickier than it looks like, and that a, a really easy way to lose five seconds in your run. Yeah, I can wave gate. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we're going to get, we've got one more nice. item to collect here in Green Brinstar. Um, I love and that then, boost. Yeah, it's, there's some really, really cool movement that you get to showcase in this category. Some of which you see in other categories, some of which you don't, which is really nifty. And here we go through Waterway. Um, I get a nice little shine spark here. Ew. And now we've got eight energy tanks. There will be one more that we collect, but we will soon be on our way to that first, like, I guess Upper Norfair is the first like major hurdle in this run, but like the first what everyone thinks of as like the first huge hurdle is is coming up because um, we are soon going to be on our way to Lower Norfair, but we'll be taking a little detour and enjoying a little bit of that uh, that suitless movement first. Yeah, we're not that far away from one of the best and most interesting way to play this game. So Suitless Meridia is like moving through syrup and you can use Grapple Beam to do a lot of really cool stuff to navigate your way. Um, you can use Ice Beam to get through uh, Main Street and it's just a really cool movement tech all together and we're going in there to retrieve two super packs and another E-Tank. Now you can get as many as two more E-Tanks um, in there if you want to go all the way to Batoon um, but that's quite a 
long way to go twice because you do have to go through that hallway again. Nice D boost off of the scree right there from Pops. I love the scree boost. Yep, that's a that's a really really fun one. All right, so something cool coming up here. Um, we're gonna lay this power bomb and break the tube. Um, but the way that this room works is it switches from air physics to water physics when the tube breaks. So if you buffer a jump, then it's possible you get a gravity jump sort of effect and can go all the way up here, freeze this fish, and not have to worry about any of the other entry tech. Um, and so now Bob's doing crouching before he jumps. You can get a little bit more height with your jump if you crouch first. Yep. Um, when you if you jump without an angle held from a crouch crouch position, it gives you an extra eight pixels of uh, jump height. And then if you uh, do a, the down, a down grab, so aim down at the edge of a ledge and then break out of it by hitting forward, you get another X, you pull the bottom of Samus's hitbox up by nine pixels. So you can get an entire extra tile of jump height through a combination of crouch jumping and down grabbing, which is very, very useful when your jump height is cut because your velocity is smaller due to having to move underwater. See, this is interesting for me how Pops is going this way. Pops is going to go get watering hole supers first. Um, I, I get a similar set of items in my PVs, and I use, I like to get crab supers, then I go up, and then I finish with Mama Turtle E-Tank. I think it's a little faster to go Pops' way, but I don't know. I just don't like it as much. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get some, some single wall wild jumps here. Um, this is a tech that's also useful underwater. In a one-tile gap, um, you can just keep continuously wall jumping, basically. So, um, you can, you know, just uh, get up there without having to rely on anything else. For the two tile gaps, they're technically possible to do with just wall jumps, but it's much faster and easier to use the crab. All right, and you do. It's like Meridia is not a trivial area of the game suit list. Like the game expects you to have gravity here, right? Where so everything is doing four times as much damage as it would with gravity. And all the stuff hits hard. Like the crabs, especially, they do 120 damage suit list. All right. Got a nice little nice little fall down to the watering call here. Um and that is we have one more pack of supers to pick up, and like Kev said, one more energy tank, and that will do it for the item collection, and we can start the, the meaty part of the run and head down to Lava Dive. Yes, I'm hoping we see a pre-Lava Dive save. Lava dive save. Um, if you've seen GT Classic, um, you know, where the last category, Kill Croc's Tongue, or just any other thing where you've seen a Lava Dive, um, it's a little bit different in RBO because having no suit, the acid damages you way faster than when you have a, when you have various suits. So I don't know exactly how many more times the damage it does, um, but it kill you fast. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty painful. So the it melts. with uh, with various suit doing lava dive, you're taking no damage from heat, and you're taking three damage every four frames. So 15 damage a second from the lava. Um, with uh, with no suits, not only are you ta still taking that 15 a second from uh, from the heat, but the lava does twice as much as with Varia, and it hits you for 30. So while you're in the lava, you're taking a total of 45 damage per second. Um, with a lot of E-Tanks, you do still have a bit more time than you think you do, but like you can only make the mistake so many times. All right, now here's this good strat. Um, well done. Yeah, I there are a couple of different ways to do that, but as a very the very wise uh, runner whose tutorial first got me into RBO, uh, Fuzda says, um, "All of those are too difficult, so f that, dude. Just freeze the fish." <laughs> And yeah, you can just buffer that charge shot through the door. It's basically free. So I learned RBO through a combination of uh, watching Nevdi, Farfalu, and then um, tutorials from Fuzda and Zenny. It's kind mm -hmm. of a combination of uh, 
kind of what I watch to learn how to play this category. Yep. All right. And ooh, yeah. So those these pirates are another example of an enemy that hits you hard. A hundred sixty suitless, but um, if they're like doing that little looking back and forth head shake animation, they won't see you and won't react to you. So you want to take advantage of that window, uh, like we saw Pops do there with that top pirate to just sneak right on by. All right. And now here we go. So now we are heading down towards Lower Norfair, Ridley's Lair. Um, and yeah, you know, I expect the most, <laughs> the most anticlimactic thing in the world when you start not taking saves anymore and you're just like, all right, I'm going to go for a PV run. And then you get this far into it, you get to Lava Dive and or Green Gate and you just die. And you're like, ah, oh, I've just been playing for 40 minutes and I'm just dead. Like, I didn't even get to the fun part yet. Yep. And yeah, this part is fun. Oh, we see um, we see a little elevator pause there from, from Pops turning off um, Ice Beam and Spazer. And our safety save here, free Lava Dive. Um, we can also take advantage of these VTOMs here to, they have a 99.6% chance of dropping power bombs. So we can just farm up to full power bombs because we're gonna need those for crystal flashes once we're down in Lower Norfair. Yeah, and I like um, turning off um, Ice Beam and Spazer so that you can equip your special beam attack when you go into the Ridley fight, we'll get at least one X Factor out of pops. Yep. Um, and also without ice, uh, you can, farm those gamuts faster um, than you would be able to with ice or with grapple beam. Um, so we fill up nicely on resources here. Um, we've got a, a refill we can take here. And then we're going to grapple across the spicy lava snakes here. Deceptively difficult room to do well. Yep, uh, like you drop any of those grapple jumps. Again, those are 60 spikes. Uh, that lava is going to hit you for forty, a total of 45 a frame, or a second, not a frame, geez. What is this, a crystal flash? Um, and we're just going to roll in, bounce off the Nami Hay. Hold. Wall jump. Wall jump, very nicely done. And that is the first big Lower Norfair hurdle. We are done. We are past the lava dive. We are taking a save. We do not have to lava dive again. GG pops. Heck yeah, plenty of energy to spare, which is definitely what you want to see because you're going to take some heat damage when you're going down this elevator. So like with a shine spark, you can hold a shine spark on the elevator going down in the Lower Norfair suitless. You're going to take damage, which is a really interesting thing for the developers to include. Like, because that you know you would expect to have Varya suit down here, so I actually love that the game tries to kill you like this. All right, and so yeah, we've got that automatic reserve refill, and now we're going to do our first of many crystal flashes. So um, uh, if you missed it earlier, this is a technique that uh, restores fifteen hundred of Samus's energy that uh, consumes ten of each ammo plus uh, an extra power bomb to activate it. Uh, you can only do it under 50 energy, and oh, very, very nice. This this trick is a run killer, and Pops gets its second try, this green, green gate glitch. Um, setting that, the in-room setup for that is frame perfect, So, and it's fairly pixel precise. So we're going to farm some more supers here. Lay a power bomb here. These, these rippers are nice because they will give you a super every time unless you're full or in health bomb. Um, I think, did he do the running one? I think so. I think he attempted the running one, missed it, and then did uh, one of the in-room setups and got it second try. I like to quote Glove on the Green Gate glitch. Uh, she said it's either the easiest hard trick or the hardest easy trick in the game. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite the trick. All right, now this is kind of specific. You need to have a pretty specific amount of run speed to get a speedy jump, break the blocks, well done. Not sure if we lost sound or not. Um, yeah, what is 
Commentary is live. Kind of kind of fuchsius. Um, I do appear to have lost sound. This is weird. Um, Holy smoke! Hears us. All right, I am up, Iron Maiden fan. No idea what just happened, but uh, my microphone is alive again. It is uh, alive. Okay, it was telling me I was right. muted. Well, we get a moonfall here. Pops is doing something wild here. I don't know that I would do that, but good for you, Pops. Yep, so worst room in the game. Not quite as worst as it could be um, when you've got screw attack. Um, and now we're going to grab the first of the of two E-tanks that we grabbed down here in Fire Fleas. Um, this will let us hopefully get down to the room before Ridley without having to use another Crystal Flash. Ops is looking really healthy on resources. You know, seeing this many power bombs, you're not going to have to worry too much about Crystal Flash once you get into Ridley's room. Um, you know, plenty of supers. You're also going to get some drops from the Metal Pirates. Um, especially if Pops does a really good speed farm. We're going to see most likely a Ridley save right here. Um, I've definitely a couple times broken spin on these key hunters and then was like, yeah, I'll take the save. You know, how bad can it be? I just hit one. And then yeah. the next like 30 minutes, you can't get past Ridley. Yep. Anyone who runs any percent knows those guys are brutal. Um, they hit you for 50 damage. A uh, bit of a Kojak there, but no worries. <laughs> Um, they, Excuse me. When you have gravity suit, um, in RBO, when you have no suits, they hit you for a full 200 damage. Um, and as uh, Funtoon will tell you, rule uh, 106 is uh, taking too much damage is not good. <laughs> um, these Deskigas here are... Just Jerks. Like, rel they're relatively tame. They only hit you for 160 um, the, they're the gentlest of the big enemies down here in Lower North Air. That's where spin jumping becomes an elite level strat. Mm-hmm. And oh. we're going to see some some pirate sparks here. Took some damage, but... Oh, hit both pirates. Should still be okay if he's fast. We got three energy tanks in reserve. Yeah, it'll kind of... There'll be some... Some question of, like, the farms in this room, if we... How many of those we get. Um, but we should be able to at least make it into the, we'll make it into this next room. We'll see if Bomb we see a manual. Tight. I definitely want to farm the power bombs for mm -hmm. sure. Um, it's good to just go into Ridley with a lot of extra power bombs because you want to, you don't want to get, you know, if you get into a health bomb situation at the end of Ridley, it's hard to you know, farming up power bombs. Um, but Pop's going to do his crystal flash right here and then farm up to full supers and then we'll see a Ridley fight and uh you know let's cross our fingers and hope it's exciting and hope it's a first timer yep so that's that's nice that um the fact that he was able to get all the way over there before crystal flashing is is good um if you do the crystal flash too early in this room you actually kind of uh, you can end up killing all of the violas too early because um of the, this, if you've ever seen Look somebody at these aggro, drops. this is those that were was sick. Like where, I guess, like we're continuing to have absurd super luck. Um, but yeah, you can actually kill all of the violas early and not be able to farm their power bombs. Um, very nice X factor, and I think we're just going to do the rest of this fight with supers. Um, because yeah, Ridley takes double damage from supers, so 30 will kill him from full. Um, that nice screw factor. attack, Manip. Very nice, keep him in pogo. Beautiful, beautiful. Come on, get in the claw. That, oh. that should do it. Little oh, Ridley. Pops is okay. Beautiful yeah. fight. Excellent, excellent fight. Um, so yeah, we are totally fine here. Very nicely done. Now, doing very, that very first nice try in a marathon run is Jeff's kiss. Beautiful. Well done, Pops. Um, all right. And so now, like, this escape is not trivial either. Like, we, I think Pops should be okay. We have a lot of energy tanks. Uh, but we are going to need to farm here because there is going to need to be at least one more Crystal Flash before leaving Lower Norfair. 
Um, and you need 11 power bombs for that. Um, but and... you also need one to get out of uh, Wasteland. Yep. So we need at least 12 power bombs, which it looks like we will have exactly. Um, and then if we desperate, if we need more for whatever reason, there are the fire fleas and there are alcoons on the way out. Um, but like you really want to delay that crystal, fl your next crystal flash as much as you possibly can. Um, just because that gives you more time to, to get through not only the last few rooms, but also through, um, the single chamber with the, uh, with the bomb blocks. You can screw attack them, but it's still a pretty long room. You still end up taking, like, close to 500 damage usually just from heat. Um, all right. No spin breaks. Disc Eagles are dead. Let's see, the, let's see the speedball. There we go. Very nice. I gotta tell you, Pops is absolutely crushing this run so far. Now, oh, I have totally been in a situation right here where I used a power bomb here and didn't have enough to do the crystal flash. Um, but Pops is okay. We even have one to spare. Have to watch out for this key hunter. <laughs> this is right. a bad save. <laughs> like if you're doing like a PV run, like or if you're in like low ice or something, the save can be very bad because this key hunter can just air bomb you but um yeah. no i that was that was good good job pops you're gonna be okay but, yeah with oh <laughs> good thing we took that save oh, um man. one of the this nasty game. things uh about uh one of the inconvenient things about reserve tanks is um <laughs> your iframes still run uh while the reserve is refilling so if you have a full reserve tank and then an, an enemy or a spike bonks you and you have like more than 90 energy for an enemy, 60 energy for a, a spike, um, like or, or however much you got, it, yeah, more than 60. You will take another hit from it as soon as the reserve finishes refilling, and obviously with one reserve tank, you can worth of energy, you cannot survive a uh, a 200 damage hit from uh, a red key hunter. <laughs> And it I was very important that he remembered to save the game. So GG pops. And here's our crystal flash. This will almost certainly give us plenty of time to get out of lower Norfair here. It's not a Kevnastics run if there's not a commentator curse. <laughs> All right. And now it's just three musketeers. Screw attack makes just melts these guys. Um, little wave beam jank actually misses that uh, that middle of those three blocks, um, which is tricky because if it does, if that block doesn't break, it's actually kind of hard to tell that it's still there. Um, and if the key hunter is still there, that can lead to some very tragic moments. But yeah, through single chamber, no problem. Everybody clap for Papa Schmo making it out of Lower Norfair with well. I don't know if you really, I'm not even going to count that death. That was a dumb situation, Hecking Key Hunter. But <laughs> beautiful Lower Norfair. Didn't really lose any time on that death. Very well done and uh, super, super hard. So next part, back to one of our favorite sections of the game. We have more Sulis Meridia. And we have even cooler tricks in the second go. Um, I'm kind of hoping Pops freezes the fish when he gets into uh, Main Street and gets mm -hmm. to jump on it without having to uh, shoot the crab down off the wall, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm... We got ever... some cool grapple swag coming, too, and the best boss fight in the history of Super Metroid, the Suitless yeah. Dragon. Yeah, if you liked if you liked that uh, that Suitless Meridia Pass the first time, one, we're going to see most of that again. Um, kind of have to, because you have to climb Main Street and Everest to get to the rest of Meridia. But there is... The, the rest of Meridia from to Dragon, in Dragon, out of Dragon, and after Dragon is all also super cool. It shows off a lot of really, really fascinating tech. All right. Ooh, and we're going for the gravity jump through the door. All right. A little bit early on that, but that's all right. We can get up there just with spin jumps and ledge grabs. Going to turn Ice and Spazer back on here. 
And... Oh, it looks like we are gonna... It's a, it's a reliable strat. We froze the... Froze the fish a little far to the... Oh, I, I see what he's doing. I think... I thought I did anyway. Oh! This is... Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> the fish strikes Dang. again. <laughs> that... Oh, man. That fish will spite you by dying at the weirdest times, as I'm sure <laughs> many, uh, some of you have seen in the clips montage um, that's playing between between runs. Um, that fish is a is a real pain. Um, Meridia but, equals time loss. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed. Um, but yeah, almost clutched that out, but it's fine. It's only a little bit of, of time loss here, and now we can very safely freeze the fish, and the rest of this climb is Fairly simple. Um. <laughs> nice one, Glove. That jump was a little close, but all good. And yeah, is as counterintuitive as it may seem, freezing that fish over there, it's actually at its lower lowest point when it's over on the right there. And so that is you know, the best place to freeze it uh, if you want it to... Like, freezing it over there lets you get up sooner. Um, and we're going to grapple these guys. Grapple is really nice in uh, Meridia, too, because it kills these crabs, which, as I said before, are really, really nasty enemies. Like, 120 energy. Um, but... We're going to get some grapple swings across the room. Watch for that pow amp there. And nice, nice nice name nice name drop pow amp. I had <laughs> no idea that's what they were called. Um yeah, you can actually grapple off of those guys as well if you fall down. Um and now we're entering the aqueduct here where we're going to get to see some our, our first piece of pretty cool grapple tech. <laughs> um we saw this as well in the uh in the max suitless run. Uh, pop something a power bomb to kill this snail. It can be a real, real pain if you don't. But yeah, so as we can see, if you have upward momentum from gra from uh, like exiting a grapple, morph and unmorph, the game puts you very briefly into a crouch pose. And again, as long as you've got that upward momentum, you can jump and then morph, unmorph again and kind of just keep chaining those together. And that lets you basically gain infinite height if you can time it properly. Yeah, watch out for that snail. Those suckers hit. His, Come the, on, snail was, <laughs> the snail was directly in the way. <laughs> oh, man, it still got him. What a jerk snail. Fortunately, Pops has a lot of energy. This is really good energy to come into Meridian. Um, Botswoon, we'll see if Pops will drive in, you know, 10 supers or, you know, charge shots are equal to a super. So 10 shots and, uh, I mean, yeah, this energy can be sketchy for Batuun if you do an aggressive Batuun fight. Yeah, um, especially does... if you get double or triple hit. Yeah, he'll hit you for like 128. I think his projectiles for 128, his body for 120 or vice versa. Um, so it's, it looks like we're going to see a super fight here. And missing one to hitbox jank, but that's okay. Ooh. <laughs> nice dodge. Ooh, what a dodge. You can see right. Pops moving around in this uh, syrup here. Yeah, it's... Very sluggish. Nice like, dodge. Batuun can surprise you and uh, deal a, a couple of nasty hits uh, unexpectedly, even with gravity suit. But nice clean up there. A little bit of a question mark shape. Batman <laughs> seems a little confused as to how he's been defeated without the gravity suit, but uh, I mean, that's his problem. All right, we've got these Poyos. We, uh, Pops is going to need to farm a little bit. We are going to need um, at least 10 supers. I imagine he's going to want a few more. Um, I usually like 15 so you can, because uh, you got the two doors. You got the eye yep. door and the green door. Yeah, um, I just like to have just spare ones just in case. And you also got to 
Pops is really good on missiles too, but you have the turrets you got to be concerned about too because you got to blow those out. Yeah. Oh, very nice midair morphs here with yes. high jump equipped. These three tile morphs are they're not super difficult, but they're they're not quite free either. So very very clean there. Do you want and... to talk about sand because of the room we're going into here in a second? Oh yeah. So the sand is is really really bad without gravity suit. Um, like anybody who's like fallen into the sand in Meridia with gravity suit knows how annoying it can be. Um, it is deadly without uh, without the suit. Um, if you get stuck, it's very difficult to get out of it. Uh, and in Colosseum, um, which is this room that we're coming up to next. Oh, very nice. Beauty. Very, very nice. Um, but this room here, Colosseum, uh, so-called because it is huge, has lots of sand, and is where runs go to die. Um, that sand there, if you turn around, you will kago through it and sink straight to the bottom. Um, and at the bottom, there are 60 damage spikes that will continuously hit you, and it's technically possible to get out, but it's very, very, very difficult. Oh, nice grapple snipe there. Shout outs um, to Kaisenton for teaching me how to deal with sand. You can get out of sand, but it is, like you said, it's very, very tricky. And Yeah, especially taking that damage, just like kind of resetting your pose. Um, but it's, yeah, very often if you suitless fall into the sand there, it, like you're just dead. So, so why uh, is Papa Schmo killing himself right now, taking so, all that damage? So we are taking all of this damage because if you remember in Lower Norfare, we were doing that crystal flash technique. Uh, you've got to be under 50 energy to do one of those, and uh, we're actually trying to do one of those here in the Dragon fight, uh, but for a very different reason. Um, and so we're also going to grapple on to, uh, to this thing here, and Pops is going to activate the reserve. We're going to get below 50, so we have Crystal Flash energy. We have um, enough power bounds. We have quite a few chances here. Uh, hopefully Dragon will not be... Uh doing a lot of crazy swoops like in some of those clips we saw yep and so there's one swoop we want first thing we wanted to do is see it drag on goop and it looks like she's gooping here we're going to initiate the crystal flash drag on will goop and grab us grab kind of early but um because yeah because of how uh the game handles pallet effects according to uh nobody nada one of our resident mechanical experts um, get, interrupting a crystal flash with the force stand Ooh. gives you a, a flash a, a flash suit, which is the same as a spike suit. Then in, trying to shine sparking and getting grabbed by Dragon during the shine spark windup gives you a blue suit, which you can see here. So Pops now has essentially the effect of having a full run speed speed booster charge. Uh, you can see he's got the blue echoes and he can charge a shine spark at any time that he can use. Um, but that was that was a textbook Dragon fight. Like particularly that blue suit conversion, like that can be that can be like a real pain to do. And Pops just made it look like nothing. Um, so now we're gonna do our grapple escape from Dragon. So one of the things that makes this category possible without having to do a very slow X-ray climb. Uh, like nothing look at that those are not trivial grapple jumps at all those are like can be very very difficult to time and here's why we need the blue suit oh no <laughs> dang oh yeah you need to spark straight up because otherwise there's no way to get out of here um yeah, but pops took the save so it should be able to do it again yes yeah, so we do have we do have a save here, um, pre-Dragon, precisely, I imagine, because of this. Because this is the... Uh, like, the Dragon fight can be... has its own challenges. The Dragon escape is, like, what's really difficult. But is, honestly, I think, a lot more difficult. Um, but we have the save pre-Dragon, so we'll just have to... All we have to do here is damage down again, um, do another Crystal Flash, get grabbed... Um, yeah, in, in, if you're not, like, 
if you're not like going for like a world record or very aggressively trying to PB, like this pre Dragon save is probably the most important one to take in the run. Um, like taking one pre Lava Dive or pre Ridley, probably not a bad idea either, but this one is just like it's it's not it's just like one thing and sometimes what goes wrong isn't even necessarily your fault yep all right the game will just sometimes just kill you <laughs> it's like oh you thought you thought you had escaped dragon not a chance <laughs> um but yeah now the bright side is uh for us viewers we get to watch another dragon fight which is like a very cool fight like the first one happened so quickly we didn't even really get to appreciate it um but yeah so it looks like nope it's not a goop <laughs> this looks like a goop pretty and... decent dragon patterns for papa today yeah and got more energy out of this one too um and so we've got our flash suit have to be careful with that because at this point if pops does anything that would trigger a shine spark Ooh, all right there we go both sides Jeez, right hand just left. grapple yeah, kill extraordinaire he, yeah i think pops may have uh, may have heard everybody talking about which which side they prefer and wanted to to show that uh, when it comes to the uh the dragon blue suit conversion he's uh, ambidextrous All right, and here is our space jump again. You have to appreciate the absolute imagination that went into somebody figuring out how to make this fight happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, technically all you need is either a flash suit, um, blue suit, or x-ray, because you can also x-ray climb here, but like I said, it's very slow. If you're very good at it, it takes over a minute. Um, all right. Now, I'm going to spark very intentionally spark directly up, and we are out of there. And so now... All right, we're not taking a save, but, but we have space jump, so we can just do a nice little space jump across the col back across the Coliseum here. No worries. So we're going to get Plasma Beam, which um, will help speed up the end of the game unless you're Feral. And uh, Feral, notable for the Crade Skip, has also done the Plasma Skip in uh, his PB. Yeah, I think uh, if you if you watch the Cliffs montage we've got going between, uh, between runs, you can see that for yourself. It's a pretty, it's a pretty beautiful clip. <laughs> Plasma skip is nuts in this category because you have to do a 60 beam shot, 60 beam mother brain fight versus a 20. And with no suits, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, well, like each uh, each onion ring does what, 80 damage? Bomb, <laughs> 80 no damage, lot. french fries. French fries do like a few hundred to like, maybe not a few hundred, but like a lot. Watch, uh, watch Feral's, Feral's RBO run is actually pretty sick. Uh, the Ridley fight, um, the plasma skip run, but uh, shout outs to Feral. Really, really cool run of the game. All right, here we go to plasma. And nice little, nice little high bump shoot there. And Plasma Beam, we're going to melt these pirates in here. There's two shots apiece. And that Plasma Beam. Oh, we we're trying to screw through that on the way up, but cleaned it up all right. And then, yeah, we're going to... This concludes most of the, like, at this point, the, the run... For the most part can't kill you there are definitely ways ways for it to kill you in mostly in the mother brain fight um but 
like you're not with this energy and this equipment you are not likely to die to fantoon or crate um yeah we're gonna thread the needle here <laughs> yeah well i mean he's he's got enough energy that he's not at risk of getting sunrise surprise yet I don't know. Fan Fantoon can just uh, all of a sudden ruin your day when you're not expecting it. So I used to farm the Kagos here, and now <laughs> I, I would just risk it with this energy right here, but I definitely wouldn't be mad at Pops if he took a farm. Yeah. Oh, right. There's crabs here. I forgot about the crabs. <laughs> One tile gaps. <laughs> yeah, the real, the real boss. Um... But, yeah, so we're... It's fine. Nobody's ever died to Fantoon in a marathon. Come on. That doesn't happen. Hold. All right. And the East Ocean here. I would also like a word sending. <laughs> I need to have a serious talk with myself. <laughs> about people who may or may not have died to Fantoon in a marathon. Yeah, all Sumo, right. Dreda Fantoon is, is a really fun segment. Yeah, it's like all of the, the suitless underwater movement in this category is just so cool. Real nice for uh, for that room, the Kazans aren't there, which hit you for 200 suitless. Um, they're really nasty. And the spikes are powered off, so they don't hurt you either. Oh, we're taking more damage. If we're, if we've still got uh -oh. plenty. All right, no speedball. That's fine. And so now we just need to look for some Fantoon. Let's hope for Fantoon to give us a good pattern. Um, in this category, um you kind of do want to see two fasts. There are some circumstances where a fast is actually kind of a bad pattern, in my opinion. Like, the fast fast, people will will always root for it, but often that second fast is not good. But, um, all right. Pops, you're making me a little nervous here. I'm, I'm oh. sitting there holding my breath. Um, so we've got our first plasma shot, and Fantoon is going to be a troll. Hell surprise. And nice fight. Boom. So seven missiles and two plasma shots is all it takes. Um and so see, we had nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing at all. No, that was a very, very good fight by Pops, you know, damage aside. And the cool thing about this is uh, as soon as you kill Fantoon, you can just get the heck out of here, you know, run to G4, right? Where did you save all that time? <laughs> um, but yes, this is, this is kind of interesting because I'm imagining that, like, Pops is going to go back down gonna go down red tower so this will be the first time that we see the top of red tower um in this run and then i guess we'll probably go back up it to to end game as well um but yeah so no gravity suit at this point it is essentially totally useless uh <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that that water is like that does not feel feel good. When you have space jumping and just kind of like zoom Oof. across. That was good though. That was nice. And we are remembering Craig. Alright, please, please we don't did not get hit by a crab. We still would have been alive. We could have tanked up to two crab hits there, but I'm glad that we tanked zero. <laughs> is it one twenty or one eighty? hundred twenty for the crabs with no suits. Um which, which is a lot of damage. <laughs> All 
Yeah, and as we said earlier, RBO is about finding new ways to die. Uh, this run is far from over. I mean, it's, you know, the real hard stuff is over, but you can get very complacent when you're sitting there and going, hey, you know what, it's just Kraid, you know, and then you enter the Metroids, and one of them gets attached to you, and the relationship doesn't work out, and you die in Turian. Um... Yeah, so I let's just hope um, Pops doesn't accidentally zombie crate here. <laughs> no idea why he would. Like, there's no reason to charge. Your <laughs> <laughs> look, it's Pops is it, look, look, Zenny. Pops is making this look easy. I need to tempt fate on his behalf because he is crushing it too much. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I just I I, can't, I have to be me. I I've tried other personas. They don't work. I do love this game. So I think I'm like more hyped for Super Metroid than I've been in a really long time. So I want to thank everybody that's been involved in this because uh, anybody that knows me, I've been kind of burnt out for a little while. Um, but wow, I, this has been such an incredible day and last night and all that. So just, I'm so glad I could be a part of it. And thank you everybody. This is freaking awesome. <laughs> all right. So here is, here's the final boss, um, aside from other brain of RBO. All right, there we go. There's the cleanup. No zombie crate today. <laughs> And All no right. Varia suit, not even for marathon safety. I'm actually embarrassed that. See, I don't get Varia suit anymore. I'm kind of embarrassed my PB gets Varia suit. Um, but like, oh, oh. geez, don't hit oh, mini. Cr mini crate is a beast. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, you so do my better be going into the Turian. Yeah, my uh, my theory oh, on God. that is uh, so Crade keeps the same number of spikes um, as. Crades, crades keep the same number of spikes as they grow. When you're an adult, you only hit like one at once because they're kind of spaced farther apart because of how big crate is. But mini crate, they're all spaced very closely together. So when you hit mini crate, you hit like six or seven spikes all at once. Yeah. And um, that's why you take so much more damage from mini crate than crate. This is this is absolute fact confirmed by Deer Force. If anyone fact checks me you're a fake friend all right now hold on i gotta i don't know which way pops goes back to which way does pops go to turian um yeah I oh know. exactly we're going up. i gotta i gotta say uh two out of ten performance here for not going back through green and pink brinstar two out of ten performance <laughs> what is this mapo <laughs> I just love going back like uh, I know that this is like maybe a little faster or it could be. I don't know. I just love going back through green and pink brinch star. It's like a little return. It's a little calm before the storm. I just I just enjoy it. But this is a it's a very good way to go back also. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I am not good at it. But yes, Red Tower is definitely faster. I mean, like, to be fair, Pops could have made this in addition to an RBO run, a free the decora run and really made professor school's day but somebody's gonna do it yeah I, nobody's freed the decora yet <laughs> that'll be in my any percent run later <laughs> he's gonna do two brinstar visits specifically to free the decora <laughs> for prof <laughs> all right and going down to turian Yeah, if you aim down with a plasma beam, you can double hit uh, those green pirates, kill them in one shot. Real convenient. And now we I mean, get a nice little coffee break. Yeah, what a really solid run for Papa Schmo. You know, uh, that unfortunate spark out of Dragon and that, you know, really quick death by the Key Hunter. But other than that, um, really clean very well executed run i think pops put a lot of really cool tech on display and it's definitely doing our community proud 
Um, one of my oldest friends, I started playing the game with Papa Schmo, so it's really great to be here commentating for him and watching him run this for 30 years of speed. So let's bring it home, Pops. Yeah, this is this is Pops time to take like 50 seconds, take a couple of deep breaths. It's like he's made it through almost the entire run. But like two, two like deaths, neither of which was super costly is like well, one death, one reset yeah, is like yeah. is a really, really strong performance. Like we are, I think we're on sub 130. We might be on sub 130 pace here. Um, I would say so if uh, we don't have any more deaths for sure. And I like this save right here. Good job, Pops. This is really good. Um, good save. I probably would have taken the pre-mother brain, but this is just as good as that place, really. Yeah, I think I think here just like you don't Metroid Rim one on this energy and no suits is I think definitely like can be can be a little iffy. <laughs> it almost happened. <laughs> the Metroid got attached. Uh, see what I mean? <laughs> can get a little iffy. So I really gotta watch what I say when I do commentary. <laughs> oh, why does this keep happening? <laughs> All right, we well, may as well grab that super. Um, and then, all right, tiny little dunk in the lava just for some exfoliation. And we're going to group up here in Metroids 4. All right. This is not a ton of energy um, if we see a baby skip. Uh, if I we... baby skip, I would definitely go to the refill. Yeah, I think it, it still would not be a bad idea to do that. Let's see what pops. This looks like a statue. Oh, statue. Um, uh, it's always... It's always interesting to see. Oh, or maybe Pops just does a single bomb. No, just like. Oh. oh. Okay, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, almost had it. Just turned. I think went back a little bit too far on that second jump. Ended up bonking that pillar, but good attempt. Um, I would crystal the, flash here. Yeah, the interesting thing, I think we're just gonna, yeah, we're just taking the refill. Um, yeah, but crystal flashing would give you 20. Well, if you crystal flash, yeah, uh, you 20 get 29, and nine. which is, you know, can be a little iffy. That gives you two missiles worth of leeway on Mother Brain 1. Um, uh, you have to be a down back skipper if you're not, uh, if you're getting screw attack and not turning it off. I still noob strat, turn it off. All right, and so here, here's a save. Um, now that we're past the baby, because Mother Brain can still cause you problems. Um, he might do second dibs, step skip, yeah. I know he can. Uh, Pops is really good. He can do a bunch of the uh, Bubba Gump. Zeb nice. Skip. Very, very nice down back. Um... All right, and Kyle, there we go. Standing. Yeah, that's right, Kyle. Stay away. Um, uh -huh. uh, that uh, that turret there that loves to snipe your supers um, pops his name for it is Kyle. So that uh, if it ever does soft lock him, he can just uh, yell obscenities at it by name. Yeah, and a nice, nice, easy 20 shot fight here. And. Yeah, with this energy, you're most of the time you're going to be all right. You do have to be a little wary of catch up. Um, so mostly, uh, mostly tame mother brain. Pops is going to get through this fight pretty clean. Now, right. set up. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I would recommend damaging down on Mother Brain's head, but Pops will be okay. Okay, so yep, we take the... And actually, he won't need to damage down any further here, because um, the 
energy threshold actually changes based on your suits. Uh, with no suits, if you have equip, if you have below um, 340, if you have 340 energy or below, Mother Brain will not do a second brain Oh no! Oh no! Just bomb himself out. <laughs> I can't say that I've ever seen her get stuck this deep in the. What in the? So Firebat does that setup for um, stand up. <laughs> what was that? I've never in never my seen life, that really. Seen, no, I have never seen that. Yeah, you just, it's really the rare case you see Samus lay a bomb without being in more. It's actually it's pretty cool. Um. Okay, I see. Uh. Well, I guess we'll. It's not the first time that we'll see it tonight either. Then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got our stand-up glitch here. It's just uh... all right. No, no baby soft lock. And got a bit of a color change on Mother Brain. Looks like yeah, this was a a solid stand-up. Should only be a couple more shots at this point. Very nice, three shots, and that's it. Outstanding run for Papa Shmo so far, and honestly, I feel like this is going to finish like within a minute or two of Pop's PB, so without the soft lock and the death, uh, this most likely would have been PB run for Pop, so other than those two tiny little snafus, what a, what a phenomenal job with uh, you know a very volatile run, definitely not a marathon safe run, so seriously, well done, Papa Shmo. Yeah, really, really excellent stuff on display here. Showed off some of the coolest tech in the game. It's like really demonstrated the like the absolute freedom that this game gives you compared to like other games in the series and even the like any other game that I've played in the entire Metroidvania genre. It's like does not have the same amount of like meaningful freedom to explore and like route and play the game that you want the way Super Metroid does. And it wouldn't be a 30 years of speed run without a little bit of a hiccup in Leodox room. Ooh, bonks the spark. That's okay. Just gonna do things the old fashioned way. And up the climb into parlor. I. Don't, I don't know if Pop is Taunt gonna... them, taunt nope. them. Oh. And one last room and GG Papa Schmo. Excellent, excellent run. That was, that was a, a just a joy to watch. A joy to watch and very happy to do comms with you for this 30 years of speed exactly. Yeah, you really too can. Meet you, you know, when we met out at SG Live, and very, very proud to have you as a member of my Discord. Just somebody that's really cool to hang with. So thank you for being here tonight. No, oh, thanks, Kev. Yeah, I'm really, I was really, really excited that I got picked to to do comms, especially for like with you, because I know that both of us like really, really love this category and for this event, just because this is. Like this game's so important to me. This community is like so important to me, and it's like somewhere where I feel like really, really welcomed and like uh, I don't know. And like honestly, like especially this event because Zenny's putting it on. Um, Zen, one of Zenny's old Hundo World Records and one of his old RBO World Records were the runs that uh, actually got me interested in running this game as a speed run. Um, so I have him to thank slash blame for that ultimately, I think. And so it's just been, it's just been such an honor to be a part of this and to be commentating like my favorite category and just like, I love all of you. <laughs> hey, I'm going to have to say, uh, the same thing. Like, um, it's, it's nice to belong. Like a lot of my life, I feel like I haven't quite belonged in a lot of, um, a lot of places. So like, I feel like I belong in this community and I've met so many wonderful people. It's nice to be 
a part of a community event that uh, means so much to so many. So, you know, thank you, Zenny, for putting this on. And thank you, all my friends in chat and hopefully new friends uh, in the future. This this was uh, just what an incredible day. And just thank you. And yeah, we are we are far from done. You've still got several hours of Super Metroid coming up. Um, we've got a couple of low percent races. Um, we've got low ice and low speed, both of the, the inbounds 14% categories. Um, it's going to be it's like both of those are going to be a treat to watch. I'm particularly excited for Sisreem's run. Um, with, oh, you uh, know I'm a huge Sisreem fanboy. Oh, I can't. <laughs> This rain is just outrageous. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for some Sloters comms later. I think Sloters is doing comms for one of the low percent runs, right? Mm -hmm. Low ice. I'm super excited by that. So Sreem and Sloters, two of my favorite. I mean, everybody here is like my favorite runner. I got a billion favorite runners, but this is <laughs> going to be this. This the rest of the night is going to be just as incredible as the whole first part of this day was. So I'm very excited. All right, and so with that, I think uh, I think it's time we should sign off and let comms for the next uh, next runs get set up. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's been an honor and a privilege, and I've been so happy to be a part of this. And I will see you next mission. See you next mission. <laughs>